All right, folks, so today we're back on the Xbox Series S, and this time we're going to be taking a look at setting up the Dolphin GameCube emulator core in RetroArch. Now, I'm going to be doing this in Xbox developer mode, and if you've not already got that and RetroArch set up, you can check out this playlist here, which will walk you through the process of getting both developer mode and RetroArch installed on your system. Once you've got that all set up, there's just a couple of things we need to do on the computer to get this up and running. So let's head over to the PC and get started. First, we're going to need to add some asset files to our RetroArch installation. So to get those files, we're going to head over to the libretro buildbot page. So here we are on the main libretro buildbot page. And what we're going to do is click on the assets folder. Click on the system folder. And then click on dolphin.zip to download the dolphin assets we need. Once the folder's done downloading, head over to wherever your downloads go and open up the zip folder. Then click and drag the dolphin-mu folder over to your desktop to extract it. Once the files are done copying, we're going to add the system folder to our RetroArch installation. So in order to do that, open up your Xbox file share, click on the Windows Apps folder, select the RetroArch installation, click on the system folder and then just drag and drop the dolphin-mu folder in. Next, we're going to add some games. I'm going to be running my GameCube games from the Xbox's SSD, so I'm going to navigate back to the RetroArch folder by clicking the up button and selecting the games folder. Within the games folder, right click and select new folder. Name the folder GameCube. Next, I'm going to drag and drop the games I've got here on my desktop into that folder. Once the games are done copying over to the SSD, we're all done on the computer, so we can head over to the Xbox. All right, so here we are on the main developer dashboard screen, and we're going to start off by loading RetroArch by pressing A on RetroArch. So here we are on the main RetroArch menu, and from here, we're going to create a new playlist for the GameCube games we just added. So in order to do that, we're going to scroll left and down to Import Content and press A. Next, within the Import Content menu, scroll right and down to Manual Scan and press A. Within the Manual Scan menu, press A on Content Directory. Scroll down to the S drive and press A. And then within the S drive, scroll down to Program Files and press A once again. Scroll down again to Windows Apps and press A. Select your RetroArch installation and press A, then scroll down to the Games folder and press A one more time. This is where you'll see the GameCube folder, and all you need to do is scroll down and press A on that, and then scroll down once again to scan this directory and press A one last time. Next on the main menu screen, scroll down to System Name and press A, and then scroll up to select Nintendo GameCube. Next we're going to select the core that we're going to be using, so scroll down to Select Core and press A. And then scroll up until you see Nintendo GameCube slash Wii dash Dolphin and press A. Once you've selected the core, scroll down to the bottom of the menu and press A to start scan. Once the scan's complete, you'll see a notification in the bottom left hand corner and we can then hit B to return to the main menu. Back on the main RetroArch menu on the left sidebar, you'll see a new GameCube playlist has been created. So scroll left over to that and press A. Next, we're going to boot one of the games and take a look at a couple of the menu settings you'll probably want to tweak. Press the A button to select a game, A once again to run, and you'll see the game start up. And this can take just a couple of seconds. If the game prompts you to create a new game save, select yes and create a new save file before opening the RetroArch quick menu. Open up the RetroArch quick menu, and you'll see the core menu. Scroll down to options and press A. The first option we're going to take a look at is EFB scale. Press A to open the menu, and in here you're able to select the level of upscaling you'd like to use. This is personal preference, but I'm going to go with 1280 by 1056, but just select the one you want and press A. The next option we're going to take a look at is CPU clock rate. I'm going to be leaving this at 100%, but if you're experiencing performance issues on a particular game, you can tweak this setting and it may help boost performance. I'm going to leave everything through to the language settings as is, and obviously in the language settings, you can pick your system language. Next on the list is widescreen, and this one can stay on. It's basically telling your system that you're using a widescreen display. Right under widescreen is widescreen hack. Now, this setting's a bit hit and miss. Essentially, it's a hack, 
that will try and stretch and squeeze the game into widescreen. I've not had much luck with it, so I'm going to leave this one turned off. Other than these couple of settings, the remaining settings can be left as default. Once you're done with your settings, we're going to do a quick restart, so press the B button until you're back at the main RetroArch menu. Then scroll up to Main Menu, and then right and down to Quit RetroArch. Now, ordinarily, I'd tell you that you can restart RetroArch and you're ready to play your games. And you are, unless you want to play multiplayer games. On the main developer mode menu, press the A button to restart RetroArch. Once you're back in the main RetroArch menu, navigate to your playlist, scroll right and select the game you want. In this case, Bleach. Press A to select and A once again to run. If you're not worried about playing multiplayer games, you're all good to go. But as you can see, when we're starting a two-player game in Bleach, the player 1 inputs are working fine, but the player 2 inputs aren't. You can't see it, but I'm definitely hitting the two-player D-pad trying to select the character. So to sort this out and get the second controller working, let's quit the game by opening up the RetroArch Quick Menu, scrolling down to Quick Content and pressing A. Press B and scroll up to Main Menu, then right and down to Quit RetroArch and press A. Once you quit back to the main developer mode menu, we're going to head back over to the computer for just one minute. So here we are back on the computer, and what we're going to need to do is open up our Xbox file share once again. Click on the Windows Apps folder. Select the RetroArch installation. Click on the Saves folder. Within the Saves folder, click on the User folder. And within that, select the Config folder. Inside the config folder, right click on the dolphin.ini file and select edit. You'll see the dolphin.ini file open up in WordPad and what we're going to do is modify the settings for the controller inputs. Scroll down in the ini file until you see SI device 1 and you'll see that has a value of 0 next to it. Change that value to 6. Repeat the process for both SI device 2 and SI device 3 if you want to enable three or four player support. Once you've made those changes, click File, Save, and close WordPad by pressing the X in the top right hand corner. Once that's done, we can head back over to the Xbox to make sure those settings stuck. So here we are back on the Xbox in Bleach, and you can see the two player cursor is now working, and the player two inputs are working in game as well. Now you're ready to play your games. So that's the quick setup guide for the Dolphin GameCube RetroArch Core on the Xbox Series S and X. I hope you found the video helpful. If you have, please drop us a like and also consider subscribing. It's really helping the channel grow. And also, don't forget to check us out on Twitter. Thanks for watching.